Okay, I've been working with this uh, iron pyrite um, mineral rock battery that John Bedini uh, came up with. And I've been working with a different way to do this. And I'm using a marine zinc that was a leftover from my boat. And then the iron pyrite and then clean ocean salt water. This is a bottle of salt water that I got over at Catalina last summer, Catalina Island. And it's pure, clean ocean salt water that's uh, about 30 miles off the coast of California. And you can see how clear that still is after several months. Uh, nothing's, uh, nothing's happened to it. And the boat zincs look like this. They're sacrificial zincs that go on the prop shafts in different parts of the boat to keep it from corroding with electrolysis. And when the diver changes it, they usually leave some behind. And you can pick them up. Um, Anyway, it worked with the iron pyrite. It's uh, just uh, one of these leftover prop shaft sinks, piece of iron pyrite, and then a, a paper towel with the ocean salt water. And uh, it runs this thing great. And uh, thanks to John Bedini's suggestion, I wound a much bigger coil than I had. You see the size of the coil I was using? And I went to a much bigger coil there with many, many more turns on it. It's a fine gauge, 30 gauge wire. And when you do that, you end up with a much, much better um, spike, back spike. And you can run these things on lower amounts of power. And this thing's only putting out 3 quarters of a volt. That's all it is. But it'll put that out for many, many months, probably, as long as you replace the salt water. Because these zincs, whatever's in this alloy of zinc, will go several months before it gets to that point in the ocean. So I imagine in this kind of a scenario, this would just go and go and go. And as long as that motor is running and making and breaking the field in that coil, you get this flyback voltage. And that, that flyback, that spike, you can charge with it. And some of the guys are charging uh, batteries with these little tiny motors now. And uh, I didn't believe it could be done until I started seeing the videos of guys using these little tiny uh, monopole motors to charge batteries. And um, I worked on this a lot today and got much better bearings. Uh, you have to have extremely good bearings for this to work. If, it, if it's not almost frictionless, it won't work at all. And I even got it to work today on a little solar cell uh, in the house. And they just put a little electrolytic capacitor on there. and. Uh, one of these three volt uh, solar cells, um, it'll work on ambient room light, which is something I've been working on for months. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with people that the, the development on this little tiny monopole reed switch pulse motor has really taken off because of what John Bedini is doing with it. And uh, I'm following this real close. And then this iron pyrite rock battery. Uh, he's doing some extremely interesting investigation with that. And this is really a uh, semiconductor of sorts. And there's some very interesting qualities with that iron pyrite rock. So anyway, that's what I did for today. That's my um, ocean saltwater zinc iron pyrite battery setup. Thanks for watching.